What's up everyone, Jason Brown here, the king of programming to do another programming review. Thank you for coming to our channel. I am doing reviews of big names in fitness. And with that said, I wanna give you guys some context as to what I'm looking at, okay? And this program review today is a little bit different because there's a little bit more backstory with this one. This is actually not one we've had recommended, but we have had a lot of CrossFit programs recommended and I'm certainly gonna to get to some of those, but this one I wanted to get to first and I'm gonna tell you why. So first and foremost, what am I looking at? When I look at programming, we are looking at the principles of programming. Now, if you've seen any of my past videos, you probably, this is gonna be basically something you've heard already ad nauseum. Exercise order, exercise selection, sets, reps, and rest and rules, conditioning, what type of conditioning is it? Is there an intent to the conditioning? Meaning, does the end user know how hard to go or how easy to go? And if they're going easy, do the modalities align with that? If they're going hard, do the modalities align with that. Now, there's a lot more to it than that, but just to kind of give you kind of a 50,000 foot view of what I'm looking at, those are some things that go into the equation of whether or not a program is approved or rejected. So this is more about what I'm seeing, less about my personal opinion, less about anything personal. There's nothing personal with this. This is specifically what I'm seeing. And I will tell you guys that to be completely true to this, I am not looking at these programs in advance. I am looking at them with you guys real time right now. So this is my first time seeing this program. But as I said before, I have a little bit more backstory with this particular company. So back in 2015, I started programming for CrossFit gyms. Some of you probably remember that business was box programming, programming for boxes, hence the name, right? This business is the box programming. And I don't know when they came out or when they started doing their thing, but there was a point in time where people were getting me confused with them and they were trying to email them or people from their company or their subscriptions were trying to email us and cancel, things like that. So it was like, wait, the box programming? What are you talking about? And of course, upon further inspection, we found that there was a company with almost identical name. So with that being said, there's certainly a little bit more here that made me want to look more into their programming. And, you know, as far as what I know, this programming is, it seems like to me, for a number of people. One, someone that really wants to compete in CrossFit, someone that's very serious. Number two, someone that might just go to CrossFit style classes and that's their background. And maybe they're not trying to compete at a high level, but they still want to improve upon things like their Olympic lifts and their gymnastics. So this program is heavily tailored toward, toward those people. Now, when we think about someone training for CrossFit competition, there's a lot that goes into that. And reviewing a CrossFit program can be confusing and it could be super long. I'm gonna to try to make this as concise as I can today because when you look at these programs, there's a lot of different qualities that someone's potentially trying to attack in one singular session, which makes this review for me definitely more challenging because I'm trying to get this in, in a decent amount of time. My last review was almost 20 minutes, which was on the long end, but when we're looking at different things like this, there's a lot more to take into consideration. So without further ado, I'm gonna get right into it and I'm gonna try to, you know, again, break it down as quickly and as concisely as I can, but know that with CrossFit, there are different a lot, a lot of different things that go into the mix. So the tenets of programming still remain true though, okay? So we, we can still use those things at our disposal and, and use that as far as what we're looking at and assessing, that can still be the guiding light. So I just want, you know, to make that very clear with you guys. So what we're looking at here is uh, day one, which is Monday, and we're looking at multiple parts to this day. So we've got back squats. He's got you building to 90%, so eight, six, four, four reps. So your fourth set would be at 90% for four reps. A little on the high side, definitely. Three reps at 90% for most people is gonna be very challenging. I'm not a big fan of using percentages because I think that they negate things like auto-regulation, which allows us to go by feel. So I would rather ask someone to build in weight across, let's say four sets in this case, to a heavy load with a rep in reserve. So a rep in reserve with this case would be one to two reps, okay? 90% for most people is going to put them at a place where they're probably around two to three reps. For someone that's more slow twitch muscle fiber, you could certainly see higher. I've seen people hit 90% for 10 reps. That's unlikely for most people, but individuality, muscle fiber types differs from person to person. So just keep that in mind that percentages don't usually take that into account and that's something that we need to be thinking about as coaches. Now. The biggest problem here is that it says rest as needed. What the f does rest as needed mean? If you are an end user and you are not a coach, do you know what proper rest intervals are? Do you know how to properly rest across different patterns? A back squat is gonna be very different than a split squat. A split squat is gonna be very different than a leg extension. 
These are all different types of patterns that would rely on different rest intervals for full recovery. Now, full recovery can mean a number of things. We have obviously metabolite buildup. We have a neural component. So the connection with our brain, the nervous system. So those are all things to take into consideration. Now, 90% and resting as needed, you might tell someone to do that and they might say, well, I feel good after 60 seconds because they're not particularly winded, but we know that there's a lot more to the equation than being winded. So this to me is a complete red flag. Rest is needed should be three to four minutes rest, plain and simple. Okay, and I've talked about that quite a bit on other reviews. Get concise with the rest interval. Don't tell someone to rest as needed because again, that can be interpreted in a number of ways. So that's number one for day one, back squat. And then number two, we're doing some gymnastics conditioning. So toes to bar, EMOM twice. So we think about toes to bar, it's obviously a very complex gymnastics movement. It involves a kip. In the CrossFit world, it involves a kip. It involves going through a lot of range of motion, particularly at the shoulder joint, where we're going through essentially an extended position into a flexion based position so we have a lot of a lot of activity at the anterior core but also hip flexors having this done in the session this early if you want to do anything thereafter and let's say we've got two imams of five minutes each a good athlete would be able to do what does he have you doing here it doesn't really say i think we're aiming for ideal reps x reps so max reps actually sorry i missed that max reps for five minutes and i don't know if we're doing that god this is confusing i'm not sure if we're doing that for an entire minute straight every minute on the minute to me means we do a certain amount of work and then whatever remains in time we rest so let's just say if i said hey guys do 10 toes to bar on the minute you do your 10 toes to bar for a decent athlete they can do 10 toes to bar unbroken without stopping so do the math about 12 to 15 seconds tops which would mean we rest for the remaining time, 45 seconds in this case. To me, this isn't particularly clear. Am I just doing five minute AMRAP? Because in reality, if we're doing max reps, then we are doing it for five minutes straight here. There's no EMOM. So that's a bit confusing to me, but I just want you guys to think about this. If I ask you to do a lot of core work before anything else, how do you think the rest of the session is going to go? All right, so just try that one out for size because we've got one, two, three, four, four more parts to this session. So hang on. Part three, we are doing a conditioning piece, four rounds for max reps. Again, two minutes on, two minutes off, ski uh, calorie on the erg, a legless rope climb, and then max burpee box jump. So it's a two minute interval, 12, nine calories on a ski erg for most people. We're gonna be doing that in under a minute. So let's say 45 to 50 seconds. And again, I'm taking it into consideration someone that's a decent CrossFit athlete. If you guys are not CrossFit people that are watching this, some of this might not make sense and might not jive. And that's why I've taken a little bit of time before I've done a CrossFit review, because there is a lot of things that are very specific to the CrossFit space that you have to have an intimate knowledge with to understand. This is one of those things. So we're doing a two minute interval of ski, calories, uh, a legless rope climb, and a, and a max burpee box jump. So whatever time you have remaining, you're gonna accumulate volume with a, with a burpee box jump, and then you're gonna rest two minutes and repeat that for four total rounds. Again, keep in mind, we just did heavy back squats and, and a fair amount of volume with toes to bar, which, you know, going back to that, if we think about someone, a decent athlete, 10 minutes of toast of bar, I mean, you could foreseeably have a hundred plus reps. All right. And, um, again, I'm throwing myself into that in my CrossFit days, which seems like a long time ago now, how much volume I could have potentially accumulated in that time frame. So a hundred toes to bar, and then I'm doing this conditioning piece, probably not going to be putting a lot into this. I'll probably be going through the motions because we still have a ski, uh, calories in the skier, which again, we're going into a lot of flexion at the anterior core, and obviously there's a component with the hips, legless rope climb, still a lot of bracing, obviously very upper body dominant, and then a burpee box jump, which again, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, all over the place here, and we've already done heavy back squats at 90%. So let's go into part D. This is accessory. <sighs> I gotta, I gotta catch a breath here because I'm already winded. So now we are squatting heavy, 90% with the front squat. Okay, that's cool. We just did a back squat. So now we're front squatting. I guess that will help. Let's just to recap what we've done. We've back squatted up to 90%. We've done 10 minutes of toes to bar. We've done a four round conditioning piece. That's two on, two off. I'm not too good at math. Danny, do you know what the math is on that? It's conditioning with rope climb, ski at, er, calorie, and burpee box jump. And then we're going into accessory with front squat building to 90% of your one RM for three reps. Again, rest as needed. Whew. Winded. So my feedback is the same. This is coming at the end of the ses session. The front squat would actually be assistance for the back squat. So terminology is wrong, rest intervals are wrong, exercise order is wrong, let's move on because I don't wanna get caught up being here all day with just one day of programming. And this actually might need to just be one day of programming. What are we at for time right now, Danny? We already over the 10 minute mark? Probably. So now we're going into part E, boulders, shoulders, a alternated, alternating EMOM eight. 
So essentially four minutes of three swimmers, which I'm not sure what that is. I think it's a GHD swimmer, or maybe it's a, a different movement I'm not aware of. And then a 20 to 30 second handstand hold against the wall. Okay, so this is probably the easiest part of the day, but for most people, we're going into an extended position overhead. We're doing some isometric hold there. I have no problem with handstand holds if they're done properly and they are coached if you have a spot, if you need it. Obviously, it's not perfect for everyone, but someone that wants to compete in CrossFit, definitely there's a place for handstand holds. I don't know if it'd be on this particular day. I don't know if we're just adding insult to injury at this point, but to me, we're doing a lot, okay? We've squatted heavy twice up to 90%. We've done a four rounds or a four round conditioning piece, two minutes on, two minutes off. And then we've done some additional work with our front squat and now we're hitting boulder shoulders. So let's move on to part F. Okay, this is optional work capacity, ideally done in a second session. So I can appreciate that. I think that that is something that can certainly help guide people. I hope that no one's attempting to do this. I don't, I don't know someone that could do this all in one day because you would need, not only do you need a lot of time, but you need a serious level of capacity. And then the question is, if you have a serious level of capacity, is this the best way? So what we're ending with is work capacity. So we're running. We're doing 600 meter run at a 3K pace, 100 meter recovery, 400 at a 3K pace, 100 recovery, 200, and then a 100 meter recovery and then three minutes. This looks like something he just took maybe from aerobiccapacity.com. Again, is this bad conditioning? Not necessarily done in the right training plan at the right place for the right person at the right time can certainly have a huge payoff. And I, I feel like the aerobic system is, is highly underutilized in most programs today. So I think what I would, this is zone four. So he's saying zone four here. So fairly high intensity, 80 to 90% of max heart rate on a day that the neural demand was already through the roof. We squatted heavy 90% twice. Again, I don't need to recap. I just did that, you know, again, to give you guys kind of some background. So we when I look at programs, I'm always thinking about what have we done, whether that's in the day or in the week or even in the month, okay? We need to think about these things as coaches. What have we done leading up to this point? So without um, adding insult to injury, let's just move on to the next day in this program. So that's Tuesday. And now we are doing, let's see, we've got push jerks where we're building in six sets every two minutes with the goal of hitting three reps and building to a three RM, okay? So again, not enough rest. If you're going for capacity and you're trying to just work on cycling the barbell three reps with heavy loads, yes, you can do it that way. It's perfectly fine for someone competing in CrossFit. They'll probably have no, you know, they'll probably have no issues with this. Building to a true three RM, it won't be a true three RM though. So again, something to consider there. Part B is shoulder press starting at 35% and building to max reps at 85% over the course of six sets. And this is done every two minutes. At least there's a rest interval here. So the other previous day, it was rest as needed. Now we have a built-in rest interval. Again, not enough rest. If you really wanna hit 85%, you need to rest longer than that. Okay, so we can move through this day a little quicker, which um, you know, from my own point of view is nice to be able to do. So now we have an EMOM until failure of assault bike row ski erg, and it's 10, 12. So 10 for males, 12 for males, 10 for female, and then we're resting. And each, every round we're adding one calorie. So this is some, definitely some higher intensity aerobic work, which could certainly fit in on this particular day. You know, I think that if we're going for an upper body pushing day, you know, there's definitely a lot to be desired here, but let's not question that. Let's just question what it is. And then we have some core work, which we did a fair amount of core work, again, in the same position. This is hollow rock. So really anti-extension position where we're getting a lot of flexion based movement as opposed to something like a rotation or just resisting rotation or even something like lateral flexion where we're doing a single arm carry. Would have been nice to have a little diversity today, but it is what it is. So let's move on to day two, Wednesday. All right, guys. So now hopefully you guys are keeping in mind what we've already done. We've got part A is cleans where we're doing every uh, 90 seconds for 13 and a half minutes, so nine sets, we're building to 95% of your one RM. Starting off with a hand clean, low clean, and then a clean from the floor. So 95% and you're only resting, what, one rep? I mean, realistically, you're gonna have 70, 80 seconds of rest. So obviously not bad in the scheme of things, but to try to do 90%, really not gonna be a fit at all. Complete mismatch. No way that people are hitting 95% with minimal rest, okay? So again, rest intervals are way off in this program. If you wanna get stronger, you need to rest, plain and simple. 
From there, we go to five giant sets of a legless rope climb. So we did legless rope climbs on day one. Just keep in mind. We're doing pistols today. We squatted heavy multiple times on day one. Okay, so would you be sore on Wednesday from that? I know I would. Pistols and then more anterior core GHD sit-ups. I hate the GHD setup for general fitness. If you're a CrossFit competitor, you have to do them. If you wanna look good, feel good, and live a long, healthy life, don't do GHD sit-ups. They put you in a very vulnerable position. It is an excessive range of motion. I hate them. I can't tell you guys as much how much I hate the GHD setup. You will be sore for weeks if you're not used to doing them. So if you're, unless you're a CrossFit competitor, don't do the GHD setup. And then resting 90 seconds, not enough rest. If we wanna, if we want this to be an anaerobic style piece, it's not enough rest, okay? So again, the rest intervals in this program are just complete and then we are doing another Metcon with pull-ups, double-unders, double-unders, thrusters, double-unders, resting 90 seconds. And then it basically descends in reps using the same movements. However, he adds chest to bar. So we go from pull-ups to chest to bar pull-ups, double-unders, thrusters, global movements. Time cap is 20 minutes, 90 seconds rest. Again, if you want to keep this more aerobic, you certainly can do that. And this is definitely gonna be a very, very high intensity piece for anyone that's using movements like thrusters, works head to toe musculature, Pull-ups, very, very big spike in heart rate with a pull-up, okay? A kipping pull-up, okay? For those of you non-CrossFit people, we are talking about kipping pull-ups here, which is gonna have a much bigger spike in things like heart rate, and again, just overall, what is happening in terms of energy expenditure with that, double-unders, thrusters. Again, this is, this is a hard conditioning piece, and I don't necessarily think it's a bad conditioning piece, but we have to, again, think about what we have done to get to this point, all right? So this is part C, let's look at part D, I'm kind of scared. We got some glute ham raises, great, some great strength work, rest is needed, glute ham raises need 90 seconds to two minutes rest, eight to 12 reps for most people. You're gonna be hard pressed to find people doing eight to 12 reps with a glute ham raise without assistance. So you can use box assistance, you could use band assistance, but it's a very challenging movement unless you are a power lifter and have built a lot of strength in the hamstrings, or you're someone that has the motor control and has done them for years. For myself, this would be no issue for me, but most people is what we're considering here. Now, who's using this program? Most people that are competing in CrossFit, again, probably gonna be low-hanging fruit. The scaling option is banded leg curls, a completely different movement. It's an isolation movement versus um, obviously a movement where we're working the hamstrings heavily at the knee joint. Very, very different. If I was gonna prescribe a scale option for this, it would be something like a Romanian deadlift, okay, where we can actually load it. The hamstrings respond very favorably to low reps. So I also think that the eight to 12 rep range is a bit high. We could go with something in the six to eight rep range and get a bigger bang for the buck and just make sure that people are resting. We, I guess is the kind of the theme for today, make sure we're resting, right? So Thursday, we have active recovery. They have you doing some quality aerobic work. I like this and yoga, I like, I think this is a great active recovery day. I think what I would say is get more specific with the pace, it says at an easy pace. CrossFit people think easy is like, I still have to die. So I would say do not exceed 180 minus your age, which for a 40 year old guy is gonna be 140 beats per minute. That's gonna ensure that we get what we want from that. And it is actually recovery. Okay, so let's go to Friday. This is a this is a big one, guys. We're, uh, we're I'm getting winded here. Maybe I gotta work on my work. Maybe I should get on this program. We are back squatting again, wow. And we're doing it for six reps and up to 80%, okay? So now if we think about the force velocity curve, we've got force, which is heavy lifting, heavy back squats. Day one, we did force component. We worked up to 90% in both our back and front squat. On Friday, we are doing more force again. 80%, still kind of borderline speed strength, but it's heavy enough where it's gonna be not fast enough to tap into things like the velocity component of the force velocity curve. So my feedback would be, we squat today. I would probably actually do a speed uh, a speed pull movement if I was you know, rewriting this. I actually wouldn't rewrite this. It's just too much work to rewrite this program. But what I would do is I would do something like a speed box squat, where we sit back, we explode through our concentric range of motion. That allows us to break up the phases of the lift. It also allows us to use lighter loads. Something like accommodating base resistance would be a good fit there, okay? So we're building to 80% for six reps. Okay, that's part A. Part B is we're snatching every three minutes for 15 minutes, which is probably the most amount of rest I've seen in this program. And let's actually go back. Back squat is rest as needed again. So complete fail there, drop the ball. Uh, snatching up to 85% for clusters. So one, 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 10 to 20 seconds between those singles, which I like, I love cluster. I think it's a great strategy, especially with the Olympic lifts. So no issue with that. Exercise order. So purists of like, you know, the strength and performance world would say, put the snatch first, put the squat second. I would go either way on that. I've actually had success using a heavier movement first or even a speed movement like a box squat and then going into an Olympic lift but I programmed it the other way too. If you read any textbook, they will tell you exercise order to put the power-based movement first. 
And again, anecdotally, I will tell you, I've had success with it either way. I have some people that take longer to warm up and get bigger bang for the buck, but to be completely honest, I don't program the Olympic list very much at this point in my career. So it's not something I'm overly concerned with. If I was looking at this program for what it is, I'd probably put the snatch first and program it the same way, but I would rest longer, okay? Every three minutes, again, you're telling people it's kind of for work capacity. I would just say, we do five sets of clusters and we build in weight and we rest three minutes between sets, okay? Very simple, no, no, no freaking gimmicks here, no snake oil. All right, now we're doing a Metcon. So we've done heavy squats up to 80%, so not super heavy, but definitely after what we've already done in a week, relatively heavy. We've done heavy snatches up to 85%, and now we're doing a conditioning piece with box jump over and a full snatch, resting three minutes, bar facing burpee, and a full snatch at 80%. Okay, so these are heavy snatches, guys. If you're doing 80%, this is gonna be a tough one, and then a calorie row and three snatches at 80%. So he's got a total of nine nine snatches at 80%. Again, for a crossman competitor, probably have no issue with that. For general fitness, a eh, lot we can do in this session just to make things better. And now we're going to gymnastics conditioning. This is choose ring or bar muscle ups where we're doing an EMOM of one to six for three minutes and we're doing one, two, three of those. Okay, let's move on. Accessory is front squat at the very end of the session. Okay, so you guys already know what I think about that. We're building to 70%, rest as needed. Again, drop the ball there. Curls for the girls, barbell Scott curls with a, with a two, one X, one tempo, rest 90 seconds. I don't have any issues with that, but we've done bar muscle ups and we've done a lot in this day already. So you've done nine minutes of bar muscle ups and now we're gonna do some direct biceps work. You know, again, you gotta ask the question is whether or not that's gonna fit into what we're doing. I probably would have done some more triceps work because we've already have a fair amount of fatigue that's been induced in this session. All right, do you guys wanna see more or should I stop here? <laughs> Let's go to Saturday. So now we're deadlifting and benching. And this day we're doing, we're 14, 14, seven, seven at 63% of your one rep max. Kind of an arbitrary number. I don't know why, why 63, why not 65? All right, and if I do the math here, we've got what, 28 plus 28. So a fair amount of volume, just touch and go style deadlifts is what I would assume it would be. And again, keep in mind, the day before we squatted heavy twice and Yes, we've done a lot of work in this week. This is a fair amount of volume that's going to accumulate. Bench press clusters, he's got the same scheme. Rest as needed. Okay, you guys know what I think about that. We've got a weekly grinder. This is on Saturday, keep in mind. So the weekly grinder, I mean, that week was the grind already. So we've got to do more weekly grinding. We got more toes to bar, more bar facing burpee. He did bar facing burpees yesterday. Alternating dumbbell snatches now. So, you know, again, we did snatches on Friday. Now we're snatching again, but it is with a dumbbell. So I will give him, give him that. And then more bar facing burpees. Yeah, and then that's not even it for the day yet. We're gonna do a 400 meter farmer carry, go heavy, but not super heavy. Well, thank you for that. I'm glad we didn't go super heavy with that because I probably would have died. All right, so just to recap here, this program is missing a lot. If you are competing in CrossFit, or let's just say you wanna compete in the open, you're not trying to make the games, but you wanna do well, you wanna look good, feel good. I think every person that comes in a CrossFit box, after working with hundreds of CrossFit gyms and owning a box myself for five years and having hundreds of people come in my door, I have never met one person that came in off the street and said, I wanna compete in the CrossFit games. Never once, right? Now, there are certainly gyms that have more competitors, but most gyms have regular Regular people that want to look good, feel good. And then of course, when they start realizing that performance is awesome, it's fun to get stronger, it's fun to get leaner, it's fun to be able to push weight, those things come organically. So what I would do with a typical CrossFit program is I would prioritize strength, I would include aerobic conditioning, low intensity, and I would find ways to make it fun. How do we find ways to make aerobic conditioning fun? We insert things like light body weight work, light kettlebell work, light loaded carry, where we can keep the heart rate in the ideal range, which most times is gonna be 60 to 70% range, and we can also keep blood pressure down. We drive blood pressure up, that basically stops the process that we're looking for as far as kind of opening up and getting, uh, restricting blood back to the heart. When you have muscular contra contractions, you restrict venous return, which again, takes away from what we're trying to do. That's why the old adage of like, lift weights faster for cardio is not true, because we have the component of blood pressure and restriction. So all of these things said, what I would do for people is I would prescribe more accessory work. There's no accessory work. He did girl, curls for the girls with bicep curls. That was the only accessory piece in this program. He called front squat accessory. So I would do unilateral work. I would do some hip hinge, some RDL work. He did glute ham raises, but again, I think for, for most people that probably be a mismatch. I would do direct glute work. You could organize this. Let's just say if I was gonna organize one day out of this program, 
I would have someone potentially squat heavy. I would have someone do an, uh, a hinge pattern, a press pattern, an upper pull. There was no upper pull in this program, none. What, what's gonna happen if you never do any upper pulling work, direct upper back work, where we don't, where we essentially put people in positions where we're constantly working the same planes of motion, we're constantly working the same musculature, your shoulder joint from this program is gonna be completely shot. So anyone that does this program, if you're looking for longevity, don't do this program. If you wanna just kill yourself, do this program. And I think that's kind of overall what I would say about this. Just to recap, we can certainly do a lot of things, a lot of things better. If you just prioritize the foundational movement patterns, let's say if you just wanna just think about doing your own program after seeing this. Do full body work three days a week, do conditioning, aerobic conditioning two days a week. And maybe that's too many days. Maybe you just do two days of full body, two days of aerobic conditioning. Prioritize your squat, your single leg, your hip hinge, your upper press, your upper pull, and that's horizontal, not just vertical. We want a, a nice distribution of both. A lot of people say to have a much more bias towards horizontal pulling. I think it's case by case. We have people that have different scapula that moves um, through range of motion differently. All of these things need to be taken into consideration. But if I was just to say like a blanket statement, those would be kind of some of the things that I would say that will get people in a good position. You don't need to do all this extra crap the problem with CrossFit programs is they just throw everything in. And when you throw everything in, what happens is you become a master of none. So focus on better quality movements. Focus on bringing stress levels down. If you are highly stressed out and you add high, high stress training to it, you are compounding stress. So in my opinion, this program would be rejected. Best program available on the internet today. I think it's very difficult to find a trainer like Jason. That Since joining Everyday Heroes, I feel like I've stopped working out and actually started training.